Welcome back to Dalry Models. In this video, I'm going to be making a top studio chain set for the RC211V that I'm making. So, they're quite a fiddly thing to do, and I know there's quite a lot of interest in them. Um, so, I thought I'd do a video for it. So, to start with, I'll just show you the instruction sheet and as you can see you've got the contents of what's in the box build up this small sprocket for the front so you've got a um, axle which you build up the nut on the top for and then you've got the actual sprocket made of two pieces and a couple of washers um, so there's two different types there depending on what year you're making and then you've got your rear sprocket, which again, some photo etched pieces that you make up, some solder wire that goes in the middle there that you can press to hold it together. And then again, some photo etched nuts and, and pieces. But the bit that I'm going to show you what to do is this bit, which is making the jig and then actually making all of the link assembly. And then on the second side is, uh, is the sort of final part as to as to what to do. So I've put that over there for a minute. This is what you get in the box: is a lot of little rivets, some sold wire, as I said. And there's the the axle for the front sprocket, a couple of screws and nuts, and then you've got all the photo etched pieces. And what I've got is this little tub here which as you can see I've got pieces from previous sets that uh, that I've used so ultimately there's a bit of chain there that I can show you ultimately what we're going to have is a chain link like that that will work so that was just a test piece which isn't that great got uh, some loose links in there but ultimately you can see there that's what that's what I'm going to be making so very very fiddly and you can see in the box the size of the of the actual links so let's get this open so I suspect this is going to be a fairly lengthy video so I'll try and make it as short as I can and as least boring as I can. So these are your photo etch links. So you've got two types. You've got your B1s there and your B2s there. And if you look very, very closely, which I don't know whether it shows on there, the holes inside of the links are different sizes. Right, that's your the photo etched pieces for your sprockets that I showed you in the instructions. So I'll put that over there because I'm not gonna I'm not going to do those on this video. And then you've got your jig which you'll make up. And then you've got all these little links. And again I'm not I'll, I won't open the bag just yet because I don't want to lose them all. But ultimately what you've got is this tiny little thing here which is probably not going to show up on camera very well at all but what you've got is your centerpiece and then you've got two larger rings and then the outer rings um, and the idea is that the first ones go over that uh, larger part and then these ones go over the smaller part. They won't go all the way down because the holes are designed for that size. Um, so you build up the links like that and then uh, squash it all together. So they're designed that you, uh, I'll show you back in the instructions, that you basically tap them to close the links up so that they actually work like rivets and sort of flatten heads at the top 
to hold it all together. So rather than opening those, I think I'm going to use the ones that I've already made up because I've already got them made up. So I'll save me some time. So what you've got is use these screws for and the nuts to hold it all together. So I can just get a screwdriver to take that out. There's no point making up new jigs when I don't need to. So I'll leave those that new set as it is. I'll just concentrate on the old set because there's nothing wrong with it. But I'll show I'll show you what's involved in it anyway. So ultimately what you've got is a few layers of photo it's like this and then you've got this jig part here so what you would do is get these two pieces here and then get some of the solder that's in that packet put it through the holes get some pliers and crimp it which holds that together and then this top part is just two separate pieces that are just like that and there's a little bit of glue on there from the last one that I did but that is just that just PVA glue so that will just peel off and all that you use that for is just to actually hold the links in place while you put them all together so that they don't all fall out. So the first thing you want to do then is if I try and tidy up a little bit, so I've got some space to work and make sure I'm on camera, is to get, I use a little vice that I've got, a little desk vice, because then what I can do is put this in there just have a look which links I've got in here because there's two different types of links that I've got because one is for the top studio set and one is for the hobby design set and the difference between the rivets which I don't know whether it will show on camera again so these are your two types of rivets and I'm saying about that uh, which I don't want to drop it top studio one has these extra pieces in extra notches whereas the hobby design ones are just one width because they're built up differently so I'll use again I'll use the spare links that I've got for now because they're there so very very carefully pick the links up and drop them into the grooves there and if you look in the instructions where it's telling you about the positioning of them up here you leave the first slot blank because that will 
be for actually joining the chain up. If you put one in there now, it's not going to work. So go through doing all these little rivets, which I sometimes find it easy to put on the bench first before I drop it in there. And as you can see, it's quite tedious. So what I'll do is I'll whiz through all of these off camera and then I'll come back to the next bit. Right, as you can see I've tried to bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see a bit better. So that's the last one gone in there. So I'm just going to make sure that they're all where they need to be. I don't know whether that's showing up too well, if it's actually in focus. I'm trying to move it out a little bit. See if that helps focus a bit. It's difficult to tell on my screen. So, the next bit to do then, now that you put those in, is to get these bits that I mentioned earlier which sit on top to basically clamp those rivets in place so very carefully without getting any of those rivets pinging anywhere rest that on top like that and then I'm going to remove it from the jig. So you can see there all the rivets are in place, apart from that very first one, which you want to leave blank. So the next thing to do is very, very carefully start putting your links out so the first one to do is it says A which I'm just checking because I think that's wrong I think it's B that I want first. Because B is the one with the bigger holes. So my instructions are wrong. Which isn't a good start. Either the instructions are wrong or these uh, photo pieces are labelled wrong. But the gold ones want to go on top and you can see in here that it's showing you A and B and A in your pictures you can see has the big hole B has a smaller hole so it's saying do A first and then do B on top but when you look at them the gold ones are B sorry the gold ones are B2 and the other ones are B1 just to confuse you totally so they're the ones I want to do first so what we need to do now now that the instructions have completely confused everyone is carefully get these links off That's a new one as well because they've actually put them down. In the past, they've been separate links that are on a rubber backing, and so they just peel off and they've changed it. So it's making me look silly on my video, but uh, because they've changed the way that they do them. So, what I'm going to do is I'll go back off camera and I will 
we'll sort them out into separate sections and then come back. Right, sorry about that. So what I've done is I've sorted out A's and B's with my boxes labelled. And as the instructions label A and B. So they've just, like I said, changed change the, uh, the photo etched pieces that they do, labelled them B1, B2, and made them so that they're actually attached now, which they didn't used to be. So the first one to do is what I'm going to call A, um, which is the one with the larger holes. So we get our jig with the rivets in. Okay, make sure that all the rivets are where they need to be. And I'll move that out of the way a bit so it doesn't affect the white balance. And then carefully, just double checking that I'm doing it the right way, lay the links over the rivets which is easier said than done so they want to go like that so over the first two no overlap over the next two and work your way along to the end. So give me a second and I'll uh, come back when that, that row's done. Right, so most of those are done now. I've just got the last one to put on there, on that link. So there's no rivet in that end one, so it's only over one rivet there. So the next bit to do is to get the next lot of rivets and then do the overlap. So it's built up like a real chain. Well, it is a real chain, so... I don't know whether it's picking up with the light that I've got. Because it's quite reflective. So that's what you want to do. It's just overlap it like that. Carefully place that over the links like that. So I'll go finish this row and then I'll come back. Right, so the last link on this side is this one here. And then what I'm going to do is very carefully lay it down there. And I'm going to get one of the tubs that I use for everything. And I'm going to get a bit of water in there and some of the PVA glue that I've got. You don't need a strong mix of this. Purely just to hold it while you while you're working with it. So what I'm going to do very carefully because I don't want to knock those links is just brush over the PVA glue make sure your links stay where they need to be and that they're all straight and then this will hold it all in place while you do the next bit so need to repeat the same for the other side because at the moment there isn't anything so 
I'll leave that to dry and then I'll do the other side once that's dry do the same again with the glue and then come back to the next bit so that you're not sat there watching glue dry so you've seen the bit right so next bit is to finish off making this jig assembly so that we can actually crimp them so you can see there door links are overlapped on that side and the same on that side so they're only held on with the PVA glue that you saw me do so it's not very strong at all and once it's all finished that'll just wash off but it's enough to get it to actually hold while we do this bit so what we need to do is get this one here <coughs> excuse me which goes over there so that that then brings it to the level of the first lot of links and then you need number six on this one I think it is, is it six? Yeah, which has a little L shape cut out on that end for that end link. So what that's for is so that then what we do is we get the last link and just drop it in there. And then we get the final cover plate, which is this one. And get it all to line up so that these little holes all cover over the rivets. And what we'll do is we'll put a screw through both ends. says put a screw through there and I'll put a screw through the other end the other side seem to be struggling to actually get the screw in today. So then turn it over, make sure all your links are still as they should be. And then again the next one that we want be this blank plate just to bring it up to the right level and then the opposite side which is number seven just want to make sure I don't knock any of these links out as I'm pushing that down that one's a little bit loose so do that and then I'll get the last link in there and then the last plates go over the back. And again make sure that you get them all flush and try and avoid knocking any. So get these nuts tightened up you want to try and get these as tight as you can to hold it to basically clamp it all the instructions say to put one to the bottom ones as well 
from my experience of doing these, I don't actually need to because it's just this top level that you need to do these pins. And if you look, if I can get it to focus, those are all the sticking proud. And the same on that side. And the idea between the behind this jig now is get a flat metal surface and a hammer and basically tap them I don't need to tap them too hard but just like that so you see now if I get that you can see that that first row is flattened down so that is basically how you actually make the change so you stop the links from coming loose because you I'll show you on the instructions what's the idea behind it is is this is how it is when you put it in the jig and then by hammering it down as I said before you close you flatten off the head to give it that bit of a shape so that it then holds that link because it makes the head bigger than the um, than the actual link so just very carefully go over the links do it both sides check before taking it all apart that all of your rivets are actually flush you can see that there's some in the center there that aren't so they need a bit more a bit more work to them there's one there now check both sides so I'm just going to go over this side again so they're nice and smooth they're nice and smooth so now if we remove these screws You should have the first link or the first section of, of the chain. So you want to take care when you're actually removing this because of that extra link that you put on at the end and the shape of that you don't want to uh, break it off. So we'll do this side first and then take that off and straighten that one up and then we can remove that and then I'll do the same on this side. Take that one off, straighten that link up and then I can slide that off. And then I can remove the top of the jig and then it's going to be a little bit stiff because of the glue that we put on. So what I'll do is I'll get my oh, flat tweezers just to push it off and there we have our 
first section of the chain. So I'll rinse that in some water to take off that glue and then that will move quite freely with no stiff links. You can see there that it's exactly as a real motorbike chain would be. Make sure on each section that you do that you've not got any any dead links and the idea is then right at the end which I'll go through in a little bit is you put a rivet through this end and then on the other part of the chain that you've made up you then overlap it and then right at the end when you've got the full length that you need you join the two together and then you've got your uh, your full chain so I'll come back when I've got the next piece done and show you linking the two together so I said in the last section of the video at the end that I'd show you when I was ready to join the links together what I've actually done is a long section of the chain and link them together off camera um, because I thought it was more beneficial to show you the next part which is getting it to the right length so that's your kit chain and that's designed by Tamiya to be exactly the right length so that that fits in the engine and that fits where the rear wheel go so a tip that I've been given by my friend Mark on the scaleworks365.com forum is if you get a block of wood and position the plastic kit chain on it and then put some pins in and then you've got a guide for it so what I've done is I've drilled a hole in this small sprocket because there was no hole in there right in the center of it which matches the hole size of the small sprocket for the photo etch and the rear one is the same size hole anyway so when I put that on there I can stretch it so that it's pushed against there and it's pushed against there so that I get the right length chain. So fiddly part now is to wrap the chain around the sprockets to work out the length that you want. So you do this as you go along with each section of the link so each, each section that you do, just keep adding to this so that you can see where you're at. So what I've done is I've counted. So if you get that to stand up there, wrap that around that chain there, around that sprocket there, and the same on that side. And then I've counted how many links there are around that rear sprocket and there's six extra links. So I've made up, as you can see there, only half of them, the next lot of six links, which will be the right size to finish off the chain so that it doesn't sag, because if you do the whole section again, it's going to be far too long, and then it's going to sag. Um, and that's really not what you want, because it'll just look wrong if you do that. go through this take the screws out and I'll show you making up that final that final link get those screws out of there so as you can see there I've got it exactly the same, it's just a shortened version. So it's got that gold link on the end and the if it focuses the silver one, the inside one on that side. And it should be the same again on this one. Push that off and 
again as always check that your links are right and what I was going to mention before and I think I forgot something that is important to do is to make sure that they're the right way on either side as well because I've done that before now on one and I've got where you've got that link there it's been offset on the other side so it's not actually like it should be because um, I wasn't paying attention when I did it so pay attention make sure that it's symmetrical on both sides so that it works as as it should do I'll keep that up there so I don't lose it so what we want to do as I mentioned in the last bit of the video is to make up this part of the link so it requires a little bit of bending I found to be the easiest way to do it so if you get your tweezers and just prise these open a little bit if you do it flat on the bench it makes it a bit easier for getting your rivet in there doing it on camera so you can see in fact I'm going to move the camera a bit to try and get a better angle and hopefully you can see a bit better now so I've got that rivet there and I need to get it inside those two links easier said than done like that and then I can get my other tweezers so that we've got the flat end on and then I can squeeze that closed so you can see there I've got that rivet in the, the first little link so same again on this part but this time on the uh, gold outer links they don't need to be spread quite so much because they're obviously further out to start with. So carefully prise that onto there and then close the links up. Right. And then if I bring this back in what you get if I see where I've put it I don't think I could do with tidying my desk because I can't find anything again I've uh, seem to have misplaced the bit that I was looking for. There it is. Right. This is the jig made up from one that I did before. And what you want to do is make sure you get that the correct link that you've just assembled and then you've got this bottom part of this jig here that sits into which is a little bit fiddly to get in without separating that link which is key what you want to do is get that in there like that make sure that the pin is in the hole where it should be I asked before, just tap it gently. Just to close the end up. And then, same again on the other side.
supposed to link up as it should be. I'm just checking it, make sure. I don't think I just did the wrong one. You don't want these links coming off, so it's important to make sure you get all the pins closed. And if you find that you've made the jig up, and when you've released them after the first uh, the first lot of doing them, you can uh, you can use this part to uh, to close them up again afterwards anyway. struggling with this one now for some reason so there we go that's what one so there we have our completed chain section and when we bring this back now hopefully we find that it's the right length to go all the way around so if I wrap that in there again this will be easier these should be two sprockets glued together on this so they actually fit a little bit nicer when uh, when it's done properly, so I'll just mock it up on here for now, just so you can see. Let's come off that that one. could do with a spacer or something underneath these sprockets to make up for the links but I haven't got anything so but what you get if I wrap that round there I'll just do it loose for now just so you get the idea is you can see that the link will be the right size there for that chain so once it's fitted to the bike and it's actually wrapped around the sprockets properly on the bike that's the right length chain um, and then obviously it will be working as you can see like that go around there and I'll go around the front one as well and um, what is important to note is when you come to actually attach it the kit part has a break in it and it's designed to go through the gap there that fits on that like that and then it's hidden at the back um, because it's a solid piece with a hole in you need to make sure with your chain that you just made if I was to close that up now I've got no way of getting it through that so what you need to do is once this is all ready and painted and everything you need to do to it feed the chain through and make sure there's no kinks in it so you feed, feed the chain through there and then make sure that it's the right way round so it's not twisted and then join the links up here in the same way that I just showed you doing the other one and then you've ready to put the uh, sprockets on rear wheel which is over there which will have your rear sprocket attached to it like that so once you once you're ready and you fit that and then you can wrap the chain around it as you're fitting it and then you've got a fully working chain 
so there you go i hope you enjoyed the video uh, sorry that it's a bit lengthy um but i felt that i needed to actually show you the details for it so i hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you next time